again. Gary Stearman with another update from Prophecy in the News. It is the 9th of February, a Thursday, and uh, today, tomorrow, and over the weekend, going into next Monday, we're going to be discussing Iran and Syria, the United States, and Israel. Uh, these are four major players in what I consider to be an ongoing war uh, at the moment. I'm going to start by reading from Debka file. <clears throat> Dateline February 6th, U.S. President Barack Obama, by asserting on Sunday, February 5th, he doesn't think Israel has made a decision on whether to attack Iran, indicated he preferred to keep Israel back from military action and set aside a strategic reserve, while at the same time using the broad presumption of Jerusalem's assault plans to intimidate Iran into opting for diplomatic talks on its nuclear program. In other words, uh, President Obama wants to force Iran into peace talks. And he's using Israel to do it. He's using the, uh, the Syrian uprising as a lever. Uh, the next paragraph of this report is very interesting. In Israel, no knowledgeable source any longer doubts that the Netanyahu government has already reached a decision. It was instantly assumed that Major General Amir Eshel, whose appointment as the next Israeli Air Force commander uh, was announced uh, last Sunday, would lead the coming operation against Iran. And you've heard it uh, from several sources that it's almost a certainty that Israel is planning to attack Iran uh, probably a very massive attack against their nuclear facilities in quote-unquote April, May, or June. In other words, they're leaving the time uh, very, very fuzzy, very, very blurry. Now, we know that there is coming a large war in the Middle East. We know that at, as we speak at this moment, uh, the Russians are insinuating themselves into the uh, situation in Syria, uh, and of course, the Russians are very much on the Iranian side. We have in Ezekiel 38 a description of this battle, which I consider to be a, a, a very important description of things shortly to come. <clears throat> and I wanted to read something that we don't usually read. E Ezekiel 38, 17, and 18. Now, Ezekiel 38, the open, opening 16 verses of that chapter, describe a great battle in the Middle East on the mountains of Israel in which literally thousands of soldiers fall. In other words, it's not a minor battle, it's a major battle. You get into the 17th and 18th verses, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, <clears throat> Art thou a he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? In other words, uh, God is asking a rhetorical question of the enemy, saying, aren't you the one that I have prophesied about? Now, there are a number of Old Testament prophets who speak of a large-scale battle in the Middle East in the latter days. Next verse says, And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. I wanted to read that because this places the battle of Gog in a time frame. The Lord says very specifically, my prophets have prophesied of a, a large outbreak of war in the latter days in the Middle East, followed by this statement, it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. Now, <clears throat> the idea of God's fury coming up in his face, that is the wrath of God being expressed uh, in this Middle East situation, to me indicates that this is the beginning of the tribulation. Uh, I have no reason to doubt that when God speaks of his wrath, he is referring to what is called the day of the Lord when the wrath of God is finally unleashed. It has not been unleashed now for literally millennia, but the prophets have said that there would come a time, a moment in time, when his wrath would be 
unleashed. So we uh, now have a uh, what looks like the foreshadowing of a an aerial strike by Israel into Iran. At the same time, we have a Syrian uprising. Syria being to the north and east of Israel, uh, and essentially uh, the battle there is to see who controls uh, the uh, the war machine, if you will, that now occupies Syria. And I believe that the Islamic Brotherhood is fomenting a rebellion against Bashar Assad. And I have here a uh, a piece written by Aaron Klein of World Net Daily that supports this idea. Title of the piece is "Who's Really Behind the Atrocities in Syria?" And of course, we've been hearing that Bashar Assad is firing on his own people. Aaron Klein has come up with evidence. He believes that the Islamic Brotherhood is fomenting riots in the streets in order to unseat Bashar Assad and thereby set up a situation in which it could take over Syria. Well, if that happened, it would be very a very dark day for Israel because uh, Israel. Uh, faces on its northern flank all the hundreds, and some people say hundreds of thousands of rockets that are dug in in uh, southwestern Syria and southern Lebanon, all under the control of Hezbollah and also the Arab Brotherhood, the Islamic Brotherhood, should they force Bashar Assad out of office. Uh, we read here from Aaron Klein, the news media is rife with reports accusing Syrian President Bashar Assad's forces of killing at least 67 civilians in the rebel stronghold of Homs. And of course, that's been going on for some days now. The reports are the latest claims charging Assad's soldiers and militiamen engaged in wholesale atrocities against unarmed civilians. But... The Syrians say that terrorists are behind the killings of Syrians. Scores of U.S. and international news reports in recent months reviewed by World Net Daily almost uniformly failed to report the number of troops Syria claims are killed in the battles, painting a one-sided picture of Syrian soldiers firing into civilian zones instead of possi the uh, possibility that Syria is fighting a well-armed insurgency. And so Aaron Klein makes the case that it's really not as it has seemed for months uh, that Bashar Assad is simply firing at random into to street demonstrators, but rather these demonstrators are, demonstrations are being kicked up by uh, the Islamic Brotherhood. Uh, Syria widely, has widely disputed the number uh, of demonstrators in the streets and, quote, claimed that armed terrorists were behind the civilian uh, deaths. Now, he goes on to say that there are a number of reports uh, becoming available to the effect that the uprising in Syria is simply an extension of the uprisings in Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt. Uh, and the, the goal is for the uh, Islamic Brotherhood to take over Syria and soon after that to take over Jordan which is now ruled by King Abdullah II. So there is, if you will, a large-scale underground plot to force uh, existing dictators out of power and replace them with the Islamic Brotherhood, which will then set up its own dictators. But the, the part about this that's, that's very ominous for Israel is that the Islamic Brotherhood would have no compunctions whatsoever about attacking Israel and attacking in full force. So I'd like to go on and speak about other things that are happening. We're out of time, but tomorrow we're going to continue this discussion and show how it's not only the Islamic Brotherhood that is the problem. There are several other problems. I think that we have ample evidence that this war spoken of in the Bible is getting closer and closer every day. And I would uh, advise you to read Scripture, Pray, keep watching, and of course, keep looking up.